How far does a human creation have to go for a simple radio hello to take 24 hours to get there? That is what Voyager 1 is about to reach. Launched in 1977, the veteran probe keeps steadily heading beyond the solar backyard and, around the end of 2026, it will be far enough that light itself will need a full day to cross the void between us and the spacecraft. It is not just a pretty number. It is a change of scale that pushes our presence into the interstellar mode and puts a probe built with 1970s technology in the same vocabulary of distances we use when we talk about stars. The curious thing is that this is not a single discovery, but rather a feat of position, the result of time, speed, and continuous support. After nearly five decades of uninterrupted flight, Voyager 1 will become the first spacecraft so distant that communication moves into the territory of days, no longer hours. In the latest tracking, the signal's travel time already exceeds 23 and a half hours and keeps growing. While the probe advances along the escape trajectory that led it, in 2012, to cross the heliopause, the boundary where the solar wind and the sun's magnetic field lose strength and give way to the rarefied plasma between the stars. The distance associated with a light day is around 16.1 billion miles, roughly 25.9 billion kilometers. This is measured by the Deep Space Network, combining the signal's Doppler shift with precise timing of its path. As electrical power declines and Voyager's antenna sends an ever weaker signal, the tracking work gets thornier. Even so, the probe still transmits enough to keep the conversation going, a feat in itself considering the hardware's age and the extreme cold of deep space. When we start talking in days of delay, we stop using everyday solar system units and enter a scale we usually reserve for the space between stars. A light day is small compared to a light year, but it already touches the threshold astronomers use to describe cosmic separations. And seeing one of our spacecraft on that ruler says a lot about how far human curiosity insists on going. The path ahead is simple, and that is part of the beauty. There are no planets awaiting visits or major encounters scheduled, just a steady glide toward regions less and less influenced by the sun. The speed is practically stable, and although it will take centuries to reach the inner zones of the Oort cloud, the approach to a light day works as a reminder of how endurance and sustained planning can carry a mission far. At the same time, there is live science happening out there. Voyager 1 is the only operational spacecraft making direct measurements of the interstellar medium. The distance, therefore, is not an ornament. It is the condition that makes the data unique. The plasma wave system continues to listen to the density of the surrounding plasma, recording how the rarefied matter responds to disturbances and how the sun's influence dissolves with distance. These numbers refine our understanding of the edge of the heliosphere, the region where charged particles coming from the sun meet the galactic environment. The probe's magnetometer measures the intensity and direction of local magnetic fields, feeding models of the Milky Way's magnetic structure and helping explain the paths cosmic rays prefer to take. Small variations, when accumulated over time, reveal patterns and stresses we would not see otherwise. The cosmic ray subsystem, in turn, works as a radiation yardstick that is almost independent of the sun's oscillations. Inside the heliosphere, solar activity masks part of what arrives from outside. Out where Voyager is, what it measures approaches an interstellar baseline. For those thinking about crewed missions of long duration, including beyond Mars, this radiation background is a crucial data point. It guides calculations of shielding, accumulated dose, and exposure limits for future crews. There is also the learning that only time provides. Voyager 1 has become a slow experiment on the survival of a spacecraft. Decades of radiation, Tiny micrometeoroid impacts and extremely low temperatures have left their marks, but several instruments remain active. This gives engineers information about component degradation, long-term thermal behavior, and sensor stability long after the expected service life. No laboratory test can mimic this scenario for so long. Even the discussion about the heliosphere's shape leans on these data. Some models describe it with a comet-like tail. Others prefer a more rounded outline and more recent ideas suggest a crescent shape because of magnetic dynamics. Voyager does not end the debate on its own, but it pins down anchor points that rule out hypotheses that do not match the measured environment. The simple fact of having a thermometer, a magnetometer, 
and an ear for plasma outside the solar bubble is already transformative. Distance, however, exacts its operational price. When a command takes a day to arrive and the confirmation takes another day to return, the routine changes. Sequences have to be planned much further in advance, and any attempt to fix a last-minute detail turns into an exercise in patience and foresight. The stoic slowness of the dialogue with the spacecraft shapes the strategy of the team on the ground. Besides that, the energy is diminishing. The radioisotope thermoelectric generators lose power every year as the plutonium decays. To stretch the mission, instruments have been turned off and priorities have been reorganized, favoring those that still deliver the greatest scientific return. At some point, the power will not be enough even to keep the radio operating which will end the transmissions. The most conservative projections point to some level of contact until the early 2030s with less frequent windows and smaller data packets. This horizon inspires the design of the next probes. If we want to travel much farther, for longer, we will need power sources that work for centuries, perhaps sails that use photons and the solar wind, compact reactors, or combinations that remain stable for a very long time. Robust autonomous navigation will be mandatory, along with onboard intelligence to decide locally what is important to record and how to respond to the unexpected. Communication, in turn, will have to cope with immense latencies without killing the science. Voyager 1's real-world history offers a more reliable guide than simulations, pointing to bottlenecks and confirming good practices that only experience validates. In the distant future, the trajectory points toward Ophiuchus. The probe will keep drifting for millennia, and only far, far ahead will it touch the outer boundaries of the Oort cloud. In galactic terms, it will remain close to home, and that is one of the most important lessons. After half a century at tens of thousands of kilometers per hour, Voyager 1 has barely grazed the neighborhood. This contrast puts into perspective the ambition to cross the space between stars and prepares our mindset for missions that must operate on timescales that exceed a human lifetime. As long as its main instruments endure, we will continue extracting clues about the outside of the solar bubble, about how magnetic fields sculpt space, and about how cosmic radiation is distributed when the sun stops being an umbrella. We will also keep training the patience that deep space demands, embracing slow communications and meticulous planning. With every data packet received, the probe confirms that it is worth insisting. It is like hearing a whisper from the back of a giant auditorium, faint but full of meaning. When the light day mark is reached, it will not be an end, but a change of chapter in the story of how we measure our presence out there. Voyager 1 will keep drifting, silent yet eloquent, reminding us that technology ages, but the urge to explore does not. In the universe's background noise, from time to time, an almost imperceptible point announces itself on the deep space network's receiver, and that point carries a simple and powerful message that we are still looking far and learning from what the distance gives back. Subscribe to the channel, leave your like, and share with your friends. Thank you, and see you in the next video.